Order, I inform this order. I inform the Senate that at 8:30 a.m. today, five proposals were received in accordance with Standing Order 75. The question of which proposal would be submitted to the Senate was determined by lot. As a result, I inform the Senate the following letter has been received from Senator Hinch. Dear Mr. President, pursuant to Standing Order 75, I propose the following matter of public importance be submitted to the Senate for discussion: the urgent need to protect endangered dugongs and sea turtles in northern Australia. Is the proposal supported? The proposal is supported. I understand that informal arrangements have been made to allocate specific times to each of the speakers in today's debate. With the concurrence of the Senate, I shall ask the clerks to set the clock accordingly and call Senator Hinch. Thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President. Now, Hinch's hunch, and they're often wrong, but Hinch's hunch is that this matter of public importance could get sidetracked away from the threatened existence of dugongs and sea turtles and focus instead totally on native title in principle. So let me try to clear that up in anticipation. This is not about native title. It's about taking action to try to make sure that in 50 years' time Australian kids won't be saying what was a dugong and what was a sea turtle. I'm not opposed to Indigenous people going out in a canoe with a spear and, uh, and, and killing uh, for food. What I am against is young bucks in tinnies with powerful outboard motors chasing turtles down and killing them with machetes, or flipping them on their backs to die in the hot sun, or dragging them behind a fast-moving boat to drown them. Some are tied up in shallow water and kept alive even after having their flippers cut off. I was on Green Island recently, supposedly a marine park sanctuary. And as our boat pulled in, an official voice on the PA system reminded us that we were stepping onto a designated marine park. All flora and fauna are protected, we were told, and we were warned not to even pick up a piece of coral. The stentorian male voice should have said, all flora and fauna are protected unless you are indigenous. Because I've seen photos of Aboriginal hunters swerving amongst the swimmers on Green Island, having chased a turtle into the shallows to grab it and kill it. That's part of Indigenous culture? And how about trophy turtles, the ones that have been nursed back to health by veterinarian Jenny Gilbert at the Cairns Turtle Rehabilitation Centre, then tagged and released? These days, they try to release them 50 kilometres out to sea to try to protect them from the hunters. One had been nursed for 18 months, was released and killed within 24 hours, and the tag proudly displayed by the hunters. I had a sit down with elders from the uh, Mandibara people, they also run a turtle rehab centre. And the Mandibara people have banned the killing of turtles and dugongs in their coastal territory, but they explained to me that people from the rainforest tribes come down and kill them. In times gone by, they said, the marauding hunters from the rainforest would have been clubbed or speared or even killed for trespassing and hunting where they weren't welcome. Then there's the issue prevalent too in whitefella country, and that is the lack of respect for authority the lack of respect for their parents, the lack of respect for tribal elders from these young bucks. I've got me boat, I've got me outboard, let's have some fun. Now that conservative conservation warrior up north, the redoubtable Colin Riddell, he's campaigned for more than a decade. He's been lied to by politicians, state and federal, for about that long. He's shown me photos of young indigenous men with a boatload of turtles. In fact, Colin Riddell first alerted me to the dugongs and their plight when I was on 3AW more than eight years ago. And Riddell and Steve Irwin's father, Bob, have been champions of, of wildlife. And I'm sure when he speaks, the Minister for Aboriginal Affairs, Nigel Scullion, a staunch critic of us do-gong, do-gooders, I'm sure he'll say they only hunt for food. Now, how does that explain the photos that I've seen of styrofoam eskies on the luggage carousel at Cairns Airport after flights from the Torres Strait Islands and I tell you, that's not chicken meat packed in ice, that's turtle meat. That's turtle meat. And the scuttlebutt is, up north, that turtle sells for $70 a kilo and dugong for about $130 a kilo. Now, I can't vouch for this to be true, but I've been told that some industrious hunters, some hunters have earned up to $70,000 to $80,000 a year from this, quote, cultural activity, unquote. And everybody, everybody in and around Cairns seems to know about it from the local TV reporters to the cab driver, the tour boat operators, and even the flight attendant on my flight to Cairns. When, he found, when she found out why I was going there, 
She described how every school in and around Cairns went on project visits to the Turtle Hospital, to the rehab centres. And she said that before she joined Virgin, she flew on a regional airline and used to recoil at the pile of turtle shells that they were carrying in the cargo hold. Now, if we can't get a ban on the hunting, can we at least, for starters, get some official head counting of how many are, be are left and how many are being taken? Or maybe we could at least get a moratorium on turtle hunting, have a turtle hunting season. Now, in my talks with the elders up in Cairns, I mentioned what the New Zealand government did with Maori support when whitebait were under threat. Now, I know that Australians can't understand uh, uh, why across the ditch they, um, they have an obsession with whitebait, a bit like Australians and Vegemite. But when I was growing up in New Zealand, during whitebait season, the local fish shop's refrigerated window would be a carpet of silvery white fish, all the size of matchsticks. Other countries call small fish white bait, which is not true. They're really baby sardines, or in places like Canada they're called smelts. White bait came under threat in New Zealand because white bait are in fact baby enungas that head from the sea to the rivers and go upstream to spawn. And the baby fish on their way back to sea are caught in nets as they head back down in what they call runs to return to the sea. Now in New Zealand, to try and save the white bait, they shortened the white bait season. They banned unattended nets, even though Maori had been catching white bait for, for centuries. They ordered that all nets had to leave, have, had to leave an escape space on either side to ensure that some baby fish, some baby white bait, made it back to sea. And that concern for baby critters is echoed over turtles by the Mandubaraba elders that I talked to, because they have a new enemy, not just thrill killers with outboard motors on their boats. Dune buggies, dune buggies and other four-wheeled vehicles are leaving deep ruts in our beaches. It means that after the mother turtle makes it up the beach to lay her eggs, and remember, turtles don't even start to breed until they're 20, and that's another reason why their very existence is under threat. After she lays her eggs and they hatch, the baby turtles have to scurry down to the beach to the sea. Many are eaten by birds, and now increasingly they fall to the deep wheel marks and can't climb out the other side which makes them even easier targets for the birds. But going back to the dugongs, those amazing creatures who are cousins to the American manatee, and I didn't know this, but they have more in common ancestry with the elephant than with the dolphin. And when you look closely, you can understand that. These gentle dugongs are among the most endangered creatures in our oceans today, and as such, they are rightfully protected in Australian waters and can't be hunted, except for that exception I mentioned earlier that allows indigenous groups to hunt them on cultural grounds under native title. And the hunting and the taking of these beautiful creatures, these endangered dugongs and the turtles, it's not happening on a small scale. There is no hunting season for these marine mammals, which other endangered species are afforded, which means they can be hunted at any time of the day, on any day of the year. There are no controls, no rules that are regulating or limiting what can and cannot be done to these creatures. The governments admit they have no idea how many dugongs and turtles are actually being killed. Although I saw a federal report from 2000 estimated it was up to 1,600 dugongs being killed every year and 20,000 turtles. The unregulated, the free-for-all hunting of these endangered creatures means there's little data on the true magnitude of the practice. And the legal loophole results, as I said, in thousands of dugongs being caught and butchered and sold. And when we hear about the slaughter of whales and dolphins by the Japanese, by their fleets, the Australian public is appalled. And rightfully so. Rightfully so. So why do we have a double standard for the slaughter of dugongs and sea turtles in our own backyard? And that's why I would say tonight, not only is the killing of these creatures wrong, the way they're being killed is horrific. Hunters will chase a dugong until the target is exhausted. Then they'll spear it. They'll pull the dugong in by the tail and forcefully submerge the dugong's face and drown it. And this process can take up to 20 minutes before the mammal dies. Now, on my recent fact-finding visit to Cairns and Green Island, I met a New South Wales couple who've been going there every winter for 25 years. The wife told me that these days they rarely see a turtle and this year did not see one dugong. The Hinch team went out on Steve Harris's glass-walled submarine, the Big Cat Green Island. We saw some wonderful schools of colourful fish. I'd not been there actually for 50 years, and I'm sure 
and this memory plays tricks. I saw some vibrant pink coral back then, very dull coral this time, and I was told that bleaching had affected more than 30 per cent of the reef. So for the record, for the record tonight, we saw one turtle from the sub, but not one dugong. And I would say, unless something is done about this, unless restrictions are imposed and imposed yesterday, then 40 or 50 years from now, the dugong and the sea turtle will be extinct. Thank you, Senator.